Hello everyone and welcome to the Reigning Greats Kingdom. My name is Elle and today is all about oxidation numbers. But before we get into the video, make sure you go downstairs and click that like button. And also don't forget to subscribe so you can be notified whenever I post new videos. But without further ado, let's make it boom. So oxidation numbers, what exactly are they? Well, it's attributing numbers to elements that lose and gain electrons. And a way to remember this is Leo goes Ger. If you lose an electron, you're oxidized. And if you gain an electron, you're reduced. Now, if you look for agents, that definition is a little bit flopped. Let me explain. If I have an element that has seven valence electrons and I need one more, then I need to be reduced. So in order to do that, I need a handy dandy reducing agent to donate an electron to my outer shell. So the reducing agent is actually being oxidized because it's losing an electron. Now let's say I had nine electrons in my outer shell and I needed to be oxidized. Then the oxidizing agent actually is reduced and gains that extra electron, leaving the element with a completed outer shell. Now, let's go over the seven rules of oxidation numbers. Rule number one is that all pure elements have an oxidation number equal to zero because none of them have a charge on their own, which brings us to rule number two, that monatomic ions all have oxidation numbers that are equal to their charge. Rule number three is that when fluorine is combined with any other element, its oxidation number is negative one. Rule number four is that oxygen is negative two unless it's combined with fluorine or in a peroxide or superoxide as shown on your screen right now. Rule number five is that chlorine, bromine, and iodide are negative one unless they're combined with fluorine or oxygen. Rule number six is that hydrogen is usually positive one. And lastly, number seven is that the sum of oxidation numbers in a neutral compound equals zero, whereas in a polyatomic ion, they equal that of the charge. With those seven rules in mind, let's move on to some practice. So what is the oxidation number of sodium? Well, since it's a pure element, we have to go with rule number one and say that its oxidation number is zero because there's no charge on its own. Well, let's go with the magnesium ion. Its charge is two, but would it be positive or negative two? Well, according to rule number two, it has to be that of the charge, so it's positive two. Now let's move on to some compounds. In this, we have to start out with what we already know. So oxygen's oxidation number is negative two and hydrogen's is positive one. Then we have to multiply them by how many of them there are. So for oxygen, we get negative eight and hydrogen will get positive two, which we then add together to get negative six. But since the charge of the compound is zero, we have to do some algebra. So negative six plus X equals zero. That X is the oxidation number of sulfur, which we algebraically figure out to be positive positive six. So this compound is very similar in that we're starting with oxygen again. With our math, we figure out that oxygen is negative six and our charge is zero, so we find out that we need positive six. But there are two aluminums present, so we need to take the positive six and divide it by the two aluminums to find the oxidation number of one aluminum, which is positive three. This next example is a polyatomic ion, but we'll start out the same way. We start with the oxygen and find that it's negative eight, but since the charge of the ion is negative two, we need to set up the algebra a bit differently. So negative eight plus X equals negative two this time, and we figure out that the oxidation number of sulfur is positive six. Now for this final example, I encourage you to pause the video right here and see if you can complete it on your own and only resume the video when you're ready to check your answer. So just like in every other problem, we'll start with the oxygen and use the charge to find two chromiums, and then divide by two to find one chromium to be positive six. I hope that this tutorial helped you get an A plus on your test, and I will see you again soon in the reigning grades kingdom.